A radio atmospheric signal, or spheric is a broadband electromagnetic impulse that occurs as a result of natural atmospheric lightning discharges. Spherics may propagate from their lightning source without major attenuation in the Earth ionosphere waveguide and can be received thousands of kilometers from their source. On a time domain plot, a spheric may appear as a single high amplitude spike in the time domain data. On a spectrogram, a spheric appears as a vertical stripe that may extend from a few khz to several tens of khz, depending on atmospheric conditions. Spherics received from about distance or greater have their frequencies slightly offset in time, producing tweaks. When the electromagnetic energy from a spheric escapes the Earth ionosphere waveguide and enters the magnetosphere, it becomes dispersed by the near-Earth plasma, forming a Whistler signal. Because the source of the Whistler is an impulse, a Whistler may be interpreted as the impulse response of the magnetosphere. A lightning channel with all its branches and its electric currents behaves like a huge antenna system from which electromagnetic waves of all frequencies are radiated. Beyond a distance where luminosity is visible and thunder can be heard, these electromagnetic impulses are the only sources of direct information about thunderstorm activity. On the ground, transient electric currents during return strokes or intercloud strokes are the main sources for the generation of impulse type electromagnetic radiation known as spherics. While this impulsive radiation dominates at frequencies less than about 100 kHz, a continuous noise component becomes increasingly important at higher frequencies. The long-wave electromagnetic propagation of spherics takes place within the Earth ionosphere waveguide between the Earth's surface and the ionospheric D and e layers. Whistlers generated by lightning strokes can propagate into the magnetosphere along the geomagnetic lines of force. Finally, Upper atmospheric lightning or sprites that occur at mesospheric altitudes are short-lived electric breakdown phenomena probably generated by giant lightning events on the ground. Thank you for watching. For more educational videos, please subscribe to WizScience on YouTube or visit wizscience.com. I'm really interested in the radio waves that come off the lightning. Most of those radio waves are trapped between the charged part of the atmosphere, the ionosphere and the ground, and that's why when we put up our 60 or so radio receivers around the world we can detect the lightning because most of the radio wave is trapped. But a small fraction of that radio wave escapes through the ionosphere into space that surrounds the Earth, and it propagates through the space. And as it propagates, it's changed. It travels along the magnetic field of the Earth back down to the top of the atmosphere in the southern hemisphere, where it spreads out. So if you have a radio receiver in the northern hemisphere, you hear... If you have a radio receiver in the southern hemisphere, you hear what happens to that click after it's traveled through the plasma that surrounds the Earth. Now the phenomena that occurs when it travels through that plasma is called dispersion. In this case, the high frequencies travel fast and the low frequencies travel slow. So you start off with click, all the frequencies are lined up together. By the time it's traveled for one second or so through the plasma surrounding the Earth to get to the ground in the southern hemisphere, instead of being a click, you get the high frequencies arrive first, the low frequencies arrive slower and slower. It goes from being a spheric to being a whistler because it sounds like a whistling tone. And the speed at which the whistler goes from high to low tells you about the plasma that surrounds the Earth. So if we want to study the plasma that surrounds the Earth, we could do it by throwing a spacecraft up there. And that's really doable but very expensive. Or... We could put up a radio wave receiver here in Dunedin, wait till there's lightning somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, and study for almost free what's happening in the space around the Earth. And of course, you want to know about what's happening in the space around the Earth, particularly the plasma environment around the Earth. Primarily, you want to do that because that's where our technological infrastructure is. That's where all the satellites are. Whether they're the communication satellites, 
or the weather imaging satellites or the GPS network or just at the inner edge, the International Space Station with the crew that's sitting in there, they're living in a plasma environment. And understanding that plasma environment tells us about how those satellites will live and possibly eventually how they will die. And given it's very expensive to put something up there, we'd really like to know what the environment it's living in is like. Lightning is consistently one of the top three causes of weather-related injuries and deaths in the United States, resulting in approximately 100 fatalities, many hundreds of injuries, and billions of dollars of damage annually. Costs to the airline industry alone amount to about $2 billion each year. Lightning is also a major source of nitrogen oxides that affect air chemistry and air quality in the atmosphere and influence global climate. Weather forecasters currently rely on ground-based observation networks to provide real-time lightning monitoring. Coverage gaps over land and sparse non-uniform observations over oceans, however, limit the application of these networks. Additionally, the national-scale ground-based networks in the Western Hemisphere detect only cloud-to-ground lightning strikes, missing cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning, which poses the greatest risk to aviation. Also, since cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning typically precedes the occurrence of cloud-to-ground lightning, ground-based networks are limited in their ability to offer early warning of an approaching lightning threat to those on the ground. The next-generation GOES-R weather satellites will monitor all lightning activity across nearly all of the Western Hemisphere in real time, providing forecasters with a revolutionary tool for improved nowcasts and warnings of lightning hail, and other thunderstorm threats. The next generation GOES-R satellites will carry the Geostationary Lightning Mapper, or GLM, instrument, which will continuously measure all lightning activity, cloud-to-cloud -cloud and cloud-to-ground flashes, across most of the Western Hemisphere. This will be one of the first instruments of its kind to simultaneously cover such a large geographic region. In addition to monitoring lightning in real time, 
These satellite-based lightning observations will help improve predictions of tornadoes, hail, microbursts, flash floods, and help provide warnings of an impending cloud-to-ground lightning danger. Monitoring lightning nearly continuously will help emergency managers and firefighters identify potential fire ignitions in even the most remote areas and reduce response times. The expanded geographical coverage provided by the GLM will lead to a significant improvement in airline routing around thunderstorms, improving safety, saving fuel, and reducing delays. Early warning of lightning activity will help save lives for construction crews, other workers in outdoor settings, as well as the general public. The GLM's continuous observations will help forecasters predict and track severe thunderstorms and related hazards including lightning, tornadoes, hail, microbursts, and flash floods across nearly all of the Western Hemisphere. The combination of data from the GLM, ABI, and polar orbiting satellites will help improve real-time estimates of precipitation, improve warnings of potential flash flood conditions, and will be used by numerical weather prediction models to help improve hurricane forecasts. Information provided by the GLM, which includes total lightning flash rates and trends, is expected to improve tornado warning lead time, as well as now casts of hail, downbursts, and microbursts. It can do this owing to the correlation between observed trends in lightning activity, thunderstorm updraft and downdraft strength, and subsequent severe weather. Other applications and benefits of lightning data from the GLM include the potential to monitor atmospheric chemistry, improve air quality forecasts, and facilitate the study of deep convection and lightning in relation to climate variability.